deep in the ESPN tape library. The worldwide leader in classic sports launched a series designed to take a new look at old games. They called it Cheap Seats with Ron Parker. Parker, an anchor with attitude, was helped thanklessly by tape librarians Randy and Jason. The show was slated to go all the way. But moments into the first show, tragedy struck. With Ron on the DL, somebody needed to step up, like Gehrig for Pip or Brady for Bledsoe. Sitting two and three on the hosting depth chart, that someone was Randy and Jason. That is their story. And this is Cheap Seats without Ron Parker. Oh, hey, welcome to Cheap Seats. Today we'll be rewriting the Declaration of Independence in common street slang. Word. But first we're going to watch some international championship wrestling. Now, different institutions have different takes on what international means. For international basketball, it's the trapezoid-shaped lane. For the International House of Pancakes, it's a little something we like to call boys and berries syrup. And for international championship wrestling, as far as we can tell, international means the unbridled celebration of the fat old dude who may or may not be foreign. Now, before we take your ringside, here's what we want you to look for. Here's what to look for. Here's what to look for. First, it's easy to tell who's going to win these things even before the match starts. If a guy is introduced in the ring before his opponent even enters the arena, he will lose. Secondly, if he's wrestling a guy with a mask or a hat or a bone or any kind of a prop, he's probably going to lose too. And finally, if you happen to have paid hard American cash to sit and watch this event live, well then I'm sorry, but you've already lost. So grab your passports, pour some boysenberry on your pancakes, and get ready for the international wrestling experience of a lifetime. It's Funky Town, international style. It's the Man From U.N.C.L.E. logo, if it was drawn by a third grader. International Championship Wrestling, featuring the superstars of professional wrestling. Awesome! Bill Mascaras. Who? Ivan Koloff. The Mongols. Wait, who? Ernie Ladd. Tex McKenzie. Well, I guess we're done with the international portion of our show. The mighty or Eagles. are we? And Luis Martinez. Everybody As Sheriff Lobo. To International Championship Wrestling. This guy's face says credible sports announcer, but his tuck says prom date gone awry. Enjoyment today. Roll call. A Cossack. Check. Chuck Barris. Check. A Foot Locker employee. Check. A Chippendales reject. Check. A Chippendales bouncer. Check. A serial killer. Got him good. They're going against a couple of new newcomers, Tex. Tony. Oh, he's not going to fight in the babushka? Tony Morris. Tony Morris. That's from right. Miami. And Rick, Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly. Also known as Lou and Steve from the deli outside the arena. The start of our program, I mentioned Security the check. We have a special Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin pre-boarding our elite World One Ambassador Platinum Admiral Club members, as well as small children traveling alone because their parents don't love them. As little Abner Osborne. That's right. Hey, hey, Great hey. fellow. Uh-oh. Did it start? Wait, I'm confused. They didn't frisk the green guy. Well, no one's really landing any punches, so maybe it hasn't started yet. Osborne's call for the bell. They're off. They're out. Where's his partner? And Koloff. There he is. Don't worry. I'll save you. I'll just jump these ropes here and break this. Oh, it's already broken up. Well, carry on then. And just so you know, in the future, I'll have your back, dog. If you need me, I'll be outside these ropes, eagerly awaiting your tap. It won't take long. Osborne right. is a tremendous wrestler, great referee. Look here, see? I don't like your bald Russian face. What's he complaining about? The guy just broke up the fight. I think he's complaining about how he broke it up. He could have been more gentle. He's not going to take any... He's not going to take any... Right, fast forward. Fast okay, forward. all right. Look at the expression on Bulldog Brower's face. Could his Speedo be any bigger? Yeah, that thing's got more black material than Chris Rock. Look at the expression on that man. Look at him fighting away. Is he licking his scalp? I think he's grooming it. man is dick the bulldog crawler is. Vicious, vicious, ugly man. But he's got a really great personality. Billy Osborne. He's an ex-Marine, that bulldog brawler. Ah, yes. He's using some of those old Marine techniques like hair pulling and cannibalism. The difference is when Tyson did it, he was desperate. This guy's just hungry. Tony Morris. Young Tony Morris, one of the... Dick the Bulldog Brower doesn't look like he's in good enough shape to wrestle. Dick the Bulldog Brower doesn't look like he's in good enough shape to watch wrestling. 
Trower now. Body slam. Oh, that's that's it. That's gotta be combat it. boots tattoo. Yep, this guy's definitely a fake marine. He makes Sergeant Slaughter look like a four-star general. That's the kind of guy you see at a bar in the daytime, opening a month's worth of mail. You know, Rand, they don't just throw together a production like International Championship Wrestling. There are literally tens of thousands of people working behind the scenes to pull this thing off. I know. Well, did you also know that all of Bulldog Brower's lines were recorded after the fact by actor Bruno Kirby? Really? Oh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, there's also a guy whose sole job is to enhance every little sound you hear in a show like this. No way. Don't believe me? No. Take a look. Before me, when you body slam someone, nothing. Not a sound. Then I came along and wrestling became wrestling. I'm Gene Stapleton. I'm a Foley artist. Foley artists have been used in film since they were making talkies. Um, Foley artist's job basically is to enhance the sound that you see on the screen. So for instance, I would um, walk on gravel, or use gravel, when you see someone walking. Enhance the footsteps, for instance. I love sound. It's my life. I've loved sound. Garbage truck. You hear? Yeah. I'm aware of it right away, probably a few seconds before you are. Just because my ears are attuned to all the sounds that are going on right now. Yes, sir. Red headed chirper. It's very passionate, and it's like, I assume what. Alexander Graham now felt when he wanted to invent the phone, or what Alexander the Great felt when he wanted to kill people in war. In 1979, the wrestling folks hired me to enhance their sound. Uh, it wasn't as easy as it sounds. Every sound for me comes from my mind. To fit a new style of sound for wrestling was, was, was very difficult loud then one day it hit me literally i was outside in a windstorm and a piece of aluminum siding from a nearby halfway house hit me in the head at least i thought it was the wind it turns out it was a guy from the halfway house who hit me over the head with a piece of aluminum siding and stole my wallet after i awoke from my coma three weeks later i realized that sound the aluminum siding hitting me in the head. That's the body slam. Superstar like his father was, that takes a lot of courage right there. I want to take sound to a new level of sound. I want to make it not even sound anymore. I want to make it a different word. I can't explain to you how complex it is for me. I got plans, big plans. Okay, welcome back to Cheap Seats and International Championship Wrestling. Now, we're not showing you every match from this show because, well, we don't hate you that much. Yeah, plus we only have half an hour, so here's what we had to cut. An aging wrestler had trouble timing his fake moves. A nervous wrestler wished he had pockets during an awkward interview. Hands in the pockets. Whoop, no pockets. Hands on the hip. Ah, doggone it, don't have any pockets. A last-minute replacement wrestler was found in the stands. He's wearing a Western shirt and red underoos. I'm betting he had jeans on five minutes ago. And a young Jackie Mason tried his luck in the ring. Now, why would I want to use a half Nelson when I got a guy who can put me in a full Nelson for the same price? Ladies and gentlemen... I miss the doors. Wrestlers scattered on Don's turnbuckles bleeding. Fake Marines crowd the young referee's fragile eggshell mind. Hey, it's Count Franco Harris. Joe Turco! Hang a ten, dudes. And his opponent tonight, ladies and gentlemen... Wait, he's the only one in the ring. Yep. Well, he's definitely going down. Like we said before, any time you get introduced in the ring before your opponents even show up... You're going to lose. A big one of applause. Look, your mascaris is running. That's terrible. What? That's just your typical run-of-the-mill mascaris joke. 
That's worse. Did you pack your bags yourself? See. Si. Have you been with your bags the entire time? See. Si. Now, this is not the mask you're wearing in your license picture. Are you sure this is you? See. Si. Okay. Have a good flight. See. Si. Buenos dias. See. Si. Take it from yours truly, Jack Reynolds. I've been around. Uh, I've been around a few uh, wrestling rings for some time now, and I have never seen a performer with the like. <laughs> It's old man Willoughby from the abandoned gold mine. And he would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for us meddling kids. And this is probably the mask that he will wear. Wouldn't it be sweet if Turco took off his cape and he had another cape underneath it just to mock Mascaris? One fall. Could Turco be taking any longer to put his cape away? He wants to put off the a kicking as long as humanly possible, wouldn't you? Nice stomach suck, Hasselhoff. And Joe Turco. Look at the body on this guy. Magnific wow. Magnificent athlete. Graduate, graduate of the University of Mexico. The University of Mexico? Come on, that can't be real. That's like saying the University of the United States of America or USA State. He was fined five hundred dollars Seriously, he was close to hitting him. He tried to go with the right hand. A little shiatsu, a couple of domes pills, and that'll clear right up. What are you doing? You don't have a timeout left. Oh, come on! Now North Carolina gets the ball back. The I see fake foreign people. We'll have none of it. Hey, you see when I fake a punch that guy and I flew? Oh, I guess you had to be there. Oh, wait, you were there. Well, let me show you again. I flew like Aritali over the rope. Smell my pit. No! We fined $500 last time. Was There's a legal He's kick. going to work for another five this time. Beautiful tackle. Shoulders. Ooh, Turco ducked a little early. What? He's telegraphing his moves? Famous flying tackle. Moscados with an F double. This is like a cave painting of the earliest Pilates classes. And Billy really Osborne is home for the bell. The abdominal stretch. He won on the abdominal stretch? Yeah, people pay trainers sixty dollars an hour at the gym to do that for him. And the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen. Turco looks like a giant bearded baby in red footy pajamas. There is a picture. Is that supposed to be the belt? Because it kind of looks like shiny fake vomit. And I love how it's just sitting there on the chair, holding his seat till Mascaris gets back from the bathroom. Well, you gotta remember, this is international championship wrestling. That's how they roll. It's not about the belt. It's all about the mask and the cape. And the fat, out of shape, unathletic old dudes. Exactly. We got a lot more of that for you right after this break. It's big dudes. Hey, welcome back. Well, for years, man has pondered the question, do you care? Just the facts. Do you care? Ivan Koloff became a born-again Christian in 1996 and now preaches the word of Jesus to youth groups. Do you care that Mill Mascaris has been wrestling since 1965 and still wrestles today, well into his 60s? Do you care that Dick the Bulldog Brower reportedly dropped out of chiropractor school to become a professional wrestler? Wow, so he went from being a fake doctor to being a fake athlete. Yeah, and he hasn't told his fake parents yet, so be cool about it, okay? Where would I need to be cool about? At Brower Fake Family Reunions, that's where. All right. When you talk about top tag team action, you're talking about the International Wrestling Association. And when you're talking about total fruitcakes, you're talking about these guys. The Love Brothers and their manager, Al Costello. This guy looks like a psychedelic Chewbacca. And what's he thinking about right now? <laughs> We shall pulverize, eradicate... Hey, it's Australian Bill Cower, and he looks like he wants to throw a boomerang at the bus. In other words, we're the greatest tag team this side of the black stump. And the sexiest tag team this side of the Castro. The greatest. The greatest. I think you don't have to bring up the, the black stump routine. We might get bottles thrown at us, but I can tell you this... Now, hold on a second. As fans of comedy, we happen to have a clip of the old black stump routine, and as I remember it, it wasn't that bad. Yo, Black Stump, she ain't what she used to be. Oh, 
Uh, guys, you want to turn oh, his mic on? 15 minute time limit. Thank you. Introducing, first of all, from American Samoa, weighing in tonight at 243 pounds, Ati Tago. Have you tried the Ati Tago at Sushi Sushi? Hand roll or cut? And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, hailing tonight from Copenhagen in Denmark. Hey, no dipping. That is a smokeless free building, gentlemen. But you know what they do allow? Plastic batting helmets. Bingo. Accompanied by the world's greatest wrestling manager, George Cannon. What does Cannon I Am Right mean? Is he telling himself or his fat twin brother with whom he likes to ride mopeds around town? George Crybaby. Hey, our bath mat. There's the big man. Did you know that moments before this match, he was eating ice cream out of that batting helmet? red. Over 300 pounds, and he has that massive bone all the time. <laughs> massive bone. Ah, Denmark. National Championship Wrestling Cameras will pick up Eric along with his manager. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I got to see that again. Okay, does anyone else think it's weird that the ref's checking Ati Tago's legs for foreign objects and the guy's not wearing any shoes or socks? I mean, where's he going to hide the thing in his skin? Part of his... I love that this guy's name is Eric the Red when nothing about him is red. His clothes aren't red. His hair is strawberry blonde at best. He's not even Native American Indian. At least call him like Eric the Gray if Eric is his real name. His opponent, a young man hailing from American Samoa. American Samoa? Where is Samoa in America? It's actually right here. Oh. Into the rope. Ooh, now that looked real. Low bridge. Old Ati Tago just had his Ati Tagoed. Three, four thousand people yelling. I like the fact that Eric the Red was not afraid to wear Ugg boots way before the teenage girls in New York City made it cool. He's like a fat Nordic Isaac Mizrahi. Okay, I want to go back to what it says on George's jacket. The canon I'm right saying appears to make little to no sense on the surface. But what you may not know is that jacket came with a hood that read Diane. Yeah, it was a direct statement to Diane Cannon. See, George is kind of like a life coach to the stars, and he advised Diane Cannon not to do the movie Caddyshack 2. She did it anyway, and where is she today? Nowhere. Nowhere. I think she's dead. I liked her in that one movie where she played uh, the blonde. Welcome back to Cheap Seats. We're watching International Championship Wrestling, which by all accounts should be called the ICW. And that would make sense if this were American wrestling, but these are international rules, Jay. Therefore, it doesn't need to make sense. Therefore, it's okay that International Championship Wrestling is the IWA. Uh, think about it, though, Randall. It does make sense in the tradition of international initialing. The International Soccer Association, which should be the ISA, is called FIFA. The CCCP stands for the Soviet Union. And the International Bribe-Taking Committee, which should be the IBTC, is the IOC. I see your point. So everything's in perfect international order. Let's head back to Ray Manzarek, who's in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout, one fall with the... Is that crushed velvet? Well, it used to be just velvet, but then George Cannon sat on it. Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 240 pounds, the profile of Rip Hawk. The profile of Rip Hawk. It's the only thing that's pro about him. His tag team partner tonight, weighing in at 237 pounds from Las Vegas, Nevada, beautiful Bruce. Or as we like to call him, Buff Sonny Bono. And ladies and gentlemen, their opponents, team number two, making their entrance to the ring. Oh, it's nice to see that everyone was CC'd on the white hat memo. And 76 pounds, the mighty Igor. Weird. And Quick, issue an Amber Alert. San Antonio, Texas, weighing in tonight at 270. Okay, what's going on here? That kid does not want to be there. Yeah, that stuff might fly in Poland, buddy, but not here in the U.S. of A. Champion is back, the mighty Igor, the Polish strongman, and my partner, Tex McKenzie. How weird would it be if that kid was Tex McKenzie, and that's how they always entered the ring? Rip Hawk. One fall, 15-minute curfew time limit, and your referee for this Let the kid go, dude. ...will be Billy Osborne. There's the mighty Igor embracing... One there the goes the kid, off to years and years of counseling. Alright, this is boring. We gotta fast forward. 
Headlock. Whip into the ring rope. Drop down. And a beautiful... Whoa, he zimmered him. And now he's dancing like Gene Wilder and Stir Crazy. Now, this is the type of action we thought we'd see on an international event. And the fans love it. Mighty Igor looks like that guy at your gym who screams at the barbells and doesn't bring his own towel. There's a one towel. There's a two towel. Watch Rip Hawk. There he goes. Uh, rip Hawk down. We've got a Rip Hawk down. They couldn't have choreographed it any better. All right, let's jump ahead in this match. Tremendous flying mare in there by Igor off the top strand of these. Buff Sonny Bono with a knee to the family jewels. He moves pretty well for a big man. Yeah, he's like Mark Eaton with vertigo. Double teaming. I don't know what the ref's breaking up right there. Yeah, there couldn't be less action happening in that corner. I've seen more hits on a Justin Guarini album. Billy Osborne right now. Pushing back. There comes Igor. Igor coming into your... What do you think Igor wanted to ask the ref right there? If he could kiss him. Billy Osborne has disqualified There's ooh and that has got to fake hurt let's get the official decision from our ring announcer uh oh the action's still hot and heavy there goes stop Bruce. near his head stop near his head the wind from that must be wreaking havoc on his eardrums the team of rip hawk and, and the man in the white hat who is just selling jeans out of the back of his dodge dart is ecstatic Tex mckenzie and the mighty igor well, that about does it for our show, and as is customary anytime we do an international show like this one, we'd like to give out some of our international cheapies. Cheapies. International cheapie for least comfortable moment is this. In any language, in any country, that's just wrong. And the international cheapie for fattest guy goes to this man. And I'm going to go with this guy. What are you talking about? That guy's as thin as a rail. Oh, I thought you meant P-H-A-T fat. No. But that does bring us beautifully to my final thought. Who are you, Springer? No, dude, Gumble. Greg? Brian. Can I finish? Yeah, go ahead, dude. In an age where... Mo I'm sorry, I can't read without these. In an age where anyone with money in a syringe can be a professional wrestler, it's refreshing to watch regular, out-of-shape guys duke it out awkwardly in the ring. Think about it. That's why Mankind was so popular. He was a regular guy, like Rip Hawk. Except that Mankind wrote a best-selling novel that some are comparing to Catcher in the Rye, and Rip Hawk never learned how to read. Which brings us to the real point of today's show. What? How do you not know? Why do I put them on? I get all gumbly, and then I forget. Kids, if you're an old, fat international wrestler trying to make a living, you better start taking some night classes, because there's more to life than a good headbutt. Be well. What does that mean? Get all hungry and then tired and just want to curl up with a good butt. Uh, 